We're getting an update after the launch pad took that lightning strike to the surrounding towers as storms moved through central Florida. Take a look. The bolts came close to the mega rocket with the Orion crew capsule on top with at least right there one hitting the lightning towers on pad 39B. They are there to protect the rocket from exactly this and ground the lightning bolt. News 6's Brian Didlake is in the newsroom tonight with what officials are saying about those bolts and the final preps. Yeah, Brian. everything is still on schedule. The historic test flight for Artemis 1 is still set to go on time Monday morning, but leaders within NASA say they'll continue to monitor the spacecraft until then. It looks like it was a low magnitude strike. Um, it, 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 has, it has the potential to have crossed a threshold, but the, the teams are looking on it. As you can imagine, a lightning strike, uh, there are a lot of nuanced parts of a lightning strike analysis that you have to do, so uh, they're working through that now. I'm sure. Jim Freed, the director of Exploration System, is talking about this, a lightning strike hitting Artemis 1's launch pad's towers. In NASA's latest update, it wrote, a weather team has begun an assessment that includes collecting voltage and current data as well as imagery. That data then shared with experts who will determine if there was any damage to any flight or ground systems. This isn't NASA's first time dealing with weather-related issues. News 6 reported back in April, four bolts of lightning hitting towers then during a wet dress rehearsal. It's groundbreaking. It's going to change the way in which we explore. Charlie Blackwell Thompson is Artemis 1's launch director, who was still set to give the spacecraft a thumbs up for a Monday launch. <laughs> Artemis will launch unmanned, carrying an Orion capsule within 60 miles of the moon's surface. Orion will then loop around the moon's orbit until it splashes back down in the Pacific Ocean. Its ultimate goal. Well, here we are. We're going back to the moon, but we're going to live and learn and develop new technologies because we're eventually going to Mars. A Mars timestamp, according to Bill Nelson, NASA's administrator, says we'll be in the late 2030s. But before that happens, Artemis 1 needs to fly, and what experts learn from this test flight will go towards future crewed flights. It's no longer the Apollo generation. It's the Artemis generation. And that brings new discoveries, a whole new world. And happening overnight, engineers will be conducting preparations on the umbilicals, power up the core stage, and begin charging the Orion and Space Launch System core stage batteries. Of course, we'll be bringing the, all the latest updates on air and online as we wait for this historic launch. But for now, we are in the newsroom. Brian Ditlake getting results. News 6.